Hi, how, tell me who you are and why did you choose to study chemical engineering? Uh, my name is Abhisaila Rajani and I, I chose to study chemical engineering because I, when I was in secondary school, I, um, when I was choosing my pathways, I, re I liked maths and chemistry, so I went online to do some research with regards to possible careers for me, um, and chemical engineering was one that stood out for me. And yeah, so that's pretty much why I chose to study chemical engineering. I see. So where are you studying chemical engineering? And why did you choose that particular place? Uh, I chose, i um, currently studying chemical engineering at UCL. And I chose to study here because it's got a really good reputation. It's one of the best unis in the world. And I live in London, so it's pretty local for me. Um, and convenient for me to study at UCL as well and um, the selection of the staffs here are pretty amazing because a lot of them has um, really good experience with um, in industry and also uh, research work as well and the facility here is amazing for chemical engineers. Mm -hmm. So what is it like on a normal day at university? Uh, on a normal day at university, I have my 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 timetable is pretty varied. Um, so I don't have lectures every day a week. So normally I'll have uh, two lectures a day or one lecture a day. So I can give an example. Uh, on Thursdays I have two lectures and I start normally at nine. Uh, 9 to 11 is the first lecture and the second lecture is 11 o'clock to 1 p.m. Uh, and then after that we are advised to sort of work on our research project. So if you have a lab based, uh, experimental based research project you'd probably um, spend some hours in the lab as well on a normal day. Or if you have a, a theoretical one and you'd have to probably use some softwares then you might spend some part of your day uh, doing that as well. So that's what it's like on a normal day for me. Okay. So with that in mind, what do you enjoy most about studying chemical engineering? What I enjoy most about studying chemical engineering is uh, learning, learning new things and one of the things I enjoy most um, module-wise is advanced safety and loss prevention. Um, so this is where we look into um, hazards that's an accidents that's already occurred in the industry, and this is chemical industry, oil and gas, or uh, just general um, industry where chemical engineers uh, work. And then we sort of uh, evaluate uh, reasons why these accidents and um, occurs and we discuss this and then uh, review, review this to um, talk about prevention measures and mitigation plans um, and other things involved with um, potential hazards such as um, management of change and yeah. Okay, so what are some of the challenges you face studying chemical engineering and how did you overcome those challenges? Uh, so one of the challenges is because I'm pretty new in the chemical engineering world but uh, it's the softwares because uh, there are lots of different softwares that can potentially do a uh, similar work so learning to use these softwares based on what, what is required so what well, during my undergrad, we had to use um, Aspenisis for process simulations, but um, I've been in situations where I um, had to sort of work with Pro2, which is a, a similar software uh, for process simulations as well. And another challenge that I probably can say that I faced, and um, oh, how I overcome the process, yeah, the, um, the software. Um, challenges mm -hmm. it's pretty much just learning how to use them going online 
um, watching YouTube videos, asking people that probably use them already um, on a day-to-day basis in industry, see if they've got some uh, tutorials, advice or uh, books or PDFs or with how-to guides on how to use the softwares. Um, and that's how I've overcome that challenge. Another challenge um, would probably be when I was on when uh, when I was in placement because I decided to take a year out while I was doing my undergrad to do placement. And the change in the structure of um, being a student and working full time was a really really big challenge for me um, because I've never had to work nine to five every day. But it was pretty. It was pretty amazing because at the end of the day, it was about what I was gaining from the work experience, um, and I just I quickly adjusted to the change in um, environment and the change in the uh, normal day experience. Because while at university, sometimes I would have lectures that starts at eleven o'clock or starts at nine o'clock and finishes early. Um, but on placement, it wasn't the same. So yeah, I I acclimatized and I just sort of just got used to waking up early and working nine to five, or sometimes even longer, depending on what needs to be done and when um, the deadlines that has been set for the task that we've got. And that's how I've overcome that challenge as well. Interesting. So with challenges come stress. Um, what are your hobbies and interests outside of university that helps you de-stress? Oh, I like I like cooking, and I also like dining as well. I like going to different restaurants and um, things like that. Another thing I like doing, which is not very common, is playing Sudoku. Um, I think that really just helps me relax a lot. Uh, I'm also in the process of trying to learn to swim because I currently don't know how to swim. So anything that has to do with um, getting healthier and fitter and also cooking and eating. Hmm. Interesting. (laughs) Um, So you touched briefly on your work experience with Chevron. Mm-hmm. Do you mind elaborating on what you did on a daily basis while working yeah, sure. with them? Sure. So uh, while I was on placement, I was with the project management team or project engineering team. And the team I was in particularly, we looked after offshore projects. So this was for projects of uh, installation of uh, platforms or accommodation quarters or um, changing or replacement of comp, um, convoys, um, pipe plays, and all those projects that we had offshore. So a typical day for me would be uh, having meetings with the operations team because we were based in the headquarters and that was in Lagos, but the operations teams were based in um, in another location and they were closer to the platforms and all the other projects. So we normally start with um, having meetings with them, getting updates on pro- progr- progress for uh, projects that we had going on. One particular project that we had going on while I was on placement was the installation of an offshore platform. And that was in its installation phase, the final part of the installation phase. Um, and then went into commissioning phase while I was working there, which was pretty amazing as well because I was able to actually go offshore and see um, what had been done, what they had installed, and what we would be commissioning. And I was also able to see other um, platforms like a water injection platform and a processing platform. Yeah, so it was pretty. It was really good, and it was it was it was amazing because it helped put into perspective all the theory that we've been learning um, at university. So it put everything together and I could basically see myself, you know, working as opposed to being a student because sometimes being a student, you get so wrapped up with trying to um, be the best student, get good grades and you don't necessarily get the transferable skills to be, you know, a good employee. Um, but with the placement, it it was a really good blend, and it showed how 
easy or depending on how you see it, how easy or challenging it might be to move into the work environment and um, and enjoy what you do basically. I see. So it's more along the lines of transferring from working alone and being the best to working as a team. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And achieving collectively the team goal. So that is very that was very important for me. Mm-hmm. So as a female engineering student, do you have any concerns with being limited, like reaching a glass ceiling, or do you feel that this no longer exists? Um, I think it's better than it used to be, um, only because it's, you know, it's in the 21st century, um, and there's a lot of females in uh, management position, senior management positions now more than there used to be. There's more females in engineering courses as well, which is amazing. Um, so I don't think it's completely gone, but I think it's 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 way better than it used to be, and it's it can only get better um, as time progresses progresses on. Okay, last question. So what are your future aspirations and where do you see yourself in the next 5, 10 and 15 years? So my future aspiration is to be a chartered engineer. Uh, so that would mean finished completely, successfully finished my uh, my degree and then gone on to work in, in industry. Ideally, I would love to work in an oil and gas industry, but because there's so many things that um, chemical engineers can do, we can work in oil and gas, we can work in food, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, the list is endless. Um, So yes, um, in the near future, I'd like to be chartered. In five years, I see myself working in a respectable company, enjoying what I do, which is very important, being happy with what I'm doing. Um, And as the time progresses, so 10 to 15 years, I see myself working up the ladder. So working towards management roles or more senior position, Um, still doing engineering because I enjoy it. Thank you very much for taking the time to answer our questions today. No problem.